Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Baby Lock Lyric. In this video, I'm gonna show you the accessories that come with this machine. So to start with, we have this nice cover that goes on your machine. It's easy to fold up. You can even wash it if you need to, to get um, dust and stuff off of it. Um, but it's important to keep your machine covered up when you're not using it, it keeps, you know, whatever, keeps it uh, clean. Also, in here, we, oh, back, back, back here, I'm gonna show you that. The, um, it has a handle in the back and it has a place for the handle to go through the cover right here. Okay, now we have the knee lifter. The knee lifter is a wonderful little feature. You put that right in there. And I'm gonna turn on the machine so you can see what's going on. When you move the knee lifter with your knee, you can raise and lower the presser foot. It's a really, really nice feature to have. Um, that way you can, um, it's kind of hands-free. You can move things around if you need to. And that fits right in the back of the extension table like this. Now I'll show you the extension table too. So we pull off our accessory tray, put that off to the side. The extension table has these four feet that go out like this which makes it nice. You can fold this and easily put it in the closet when you're not using it, but it goes like this. Now this is wonderful for sewing large uh, projects, maybe you're quilting or something like that. You've got a lot of area here, plus you have uh, centimeters as well as inches marks right here, convenient on the front. So I'm gonna take this off for now. Put that back there, put the cover right back on like that. Okay, then you have a couple of books that come with your machine. Now, to start with, you have your quick reference guide, and this is a good one to start out with when you're first getting to know your machine. And in the back of this, it also has lettering. So you have the numbers that go with the letters. So this is the reference chart that you would use when you're doing spelling out some like letters or names or whatever. It's, it's right in the quick reference. This is your basic instruction guide and this is going to give you a lot of detail on things and procedures and how to use your machines. It's so good to study this one here. Okay. And then we have our smaller accessories. Now, when you first get your machine, you're gonna have a um, pouch that looks like this, and uh, most of your smaller accessories are gonna be in this pouch here. You also have storage in your machine here. You open your door like that, and this is gonna be in the machine. I took it out to just show you what it looks like. This has some of your most favorite, most often used feet, and it has the, the numbers and letters right there. Plus, it also has these little clips that help keep it in there nice and stable. There's places here for your bobbins also, and that fits right down in there. You've also got room underneath there to put some accessories as well as over here. And you have storage in back for some of your lesser used accessories. Okay, so let's start out over here. Now on your machine is the J foot, which is your all purpose foot. Then we have the N foot. The N foot has this groove on the back, which is different from the J foot, but this groove is meant for decorative sewing. So if you're doing some lettering or decorative stitching like this, that thickness of thread that you're putting into your fabric can just glide right on through. That's what the end foot is for, for lettering and decorative stitching, as well as doing applique. It's good for that too. Then we have our edge finishing foot. Now this is really nice for getting a nice flat edge when you're finishing woven fabrics. Have you ever tried to zigzag fabric and you get this little bump here that happens? That happens because the thread grabs the edge of the fabric and tries to pull it back in. But with this foot, it actually produces a little bit of slack. That's what that little um, piece of metal is there. The thread goes past that when it does a zigzag on that side and then back on this side, giving you, an, you know, a nice flat edge to your fabric, a really nice foot to have. Plus you've got this guide on the side for the edge of your fabric so you know where to put your fabric when you're doing um, edge finishing. And then this is your zipper foot. 
The zipper foot is good for, well, like putting on zippers, but you can also use it for putting on piping because the piping, that thin piping can go right along here and you can sew right next to your piping and have a really nice finish. You can put this on either side of your presser foot holder. It has uh, two bars there. And this little lump here is so it protects your needle because you will need to make sure your needle is to one side or the other, not in the center position when you use this foot. But that kind of helps protect your needle uh, in case you forget to move it. Um, and then this is the older style of zipper foot. Now what this is good for is, um, what I like using it for is if I am putting in an invisible zipper, um, if you're familiar with that technique, you sew in the tapes of the zipper first and then you finish that seam below the zipper. This is the, the foot you would use for that, finishing that final seam. Then this is your buttonhole foot. Now the buttonhole foot, this is how we would make buttonholes, uh, different kinds of buttonholes that we have. Um, and this is the foot you would use to make those buttonholes. Then to sew on your buttons, we have this little guy here. Now this is a button fitting foot, and I'm gonna show you that how a button fits in there. So you put your little button right in there, line it up, and then over here, you choose the button sewing um, so, uh, selected stitch, and then you may need to widen or narrow the uh, amount of zigzag that it does, but it'll zigzag just in place and that will sew the button on the fabric. Then, if you need to put a little bit of extra room between the button and the fabric, it's, if you slide this forward, that gives a little bit of extra room so that it's easier to button and unbutton. All right, so that's that part. And then, this is the blind hem foot. Now, blind hem looks like this. See, you can see it's sewn this way, but on this side, you can hardly see it at all. This is the foot you would use to do a blind hem. Then we have this foot here. Now this is nice for sewing nice, even, straight stitches that are parallel to each other. For example, if I sew this stitch here first and then I wanted to do that one, after I was done doing that one, I'd put that line right along there and sew my next line of stitching. It can be the same one, it can be straight stitches, zigzag, whatever, but it's going to be parallel all the way down. That's the point. You can follow any of those lines that you want to. So good for nice parallel lines. Then we have what I like to call the stitch in the ditch foot. It is open toe so that you can see where that needle is going. So if you're doing, say, quilt where you're trying to get right in the middle, right along that seam so that your stitches don't show at all, this is an excellent foot for that. It's also useful, useful for sewing garments too, like a, sewing a waistband where you don't want that stitching to show. Excellent foot. Then this one is a non-stick foot. It's got this sort of a glidey surface on it Excellent for sewing things that are a little bit plasticized, like maybe vinyl or something like that. It's really good for that. Then we have your needle set. Now the book is going to talk about what the different kinds of needles are good for, but basically keep in mind that you want to use the right kind of needle for your particular fabric. Uh, you would want to use um, one kind of needle for sewing knits and another kind of needle for sewing wovens. I personally like uh, Microtex or Sharps needles when I'm doing my quilting because quilting cottons need a nice sharp needle. On the other hand, if I'm sewing swimwear, I need a stretch needle that will um, go through that stretch fabric without skipping stitches. Then we have our twin needle. Now twin needle is for doing these wonderful techniques like this. And for the twin needle, you would use this little guy here, put that up there. So you'd have two spools of thread, one here, one here, with your twin needle in your machine. You'd put that on there, and then you, of course, have to go in your settings and choose twin needle right there. That way, your machine knows not to make stitches that are too wide. So I'm going to get out of that for now. And... That's our auxiliary spool pin. And there are two of these middle size spool caps. That's to, to keep the spools from sliding off the end. Two of those because you would have two spools of thread there. Now, I, I need to say something about your twin needle. 
you know when you have needles, eventually your needle, if you use it a lot, is going to get dull at the tip and you're going to need to get a new needle. Make sure you get the same size of needle, that it's not wider apart. For instance, I'll show you a couple of different twin needles here. This one is similar, the two, the width between the two needles is similar to what we have in the, in the baby lock accessories. And notice how this one's wider. You would not want to use one like this because your machine is not calibrated for this width. So keep that in mind, get the same size. And on the back of this, it shows you size 211. Two means two millimeters from one needle to the other. It's two millimeters apart. Size 11 is the, the thickness of the needle itself. Okay. And then we have four bobbins that come with your machine. These are baby lock bobbins. They're similar to the class 15 bobbins, just a little bit different. I would recommend that if you need to get more bobbins, you get the actual baby lock brand of bobbins. I think it will work best for your machine. Okay, and then we have screwdrivers. Now here's your screwdriver with the wings on it. Uh, that gives you a little more torque when you're turning it. Also, all of the baby lock screwdrivers are wider. They, that accounts for the uh, thickness in the screws that come with your machine. We've got a shorter one for getting into closer quarters. And then we've got this L-shaped one if you need a little more torque. You can also use this end for unscrewing things. Then for cleaning your machine, we have uh, other videos on how to clean your machine. You need to have a good brush to clean lint out of the bobbin area. This is what that's for. Okay, and then seam ripper. Also good for opening buttonholes. And when you use your seam ripper, put the cap on there like that, and that way when you settle, set it down, it won't roll away. And when you're done using it, just uh, cover it up. Now I will say something about seam rippers. If you use them a lot or using them through uh, thick, hard to cut fabric, eventually they wear out. They don't, you can't sharpen a seam ripper, just get a new one. It's better to have a nice new sharp seam ripper that you're using. Okay, um, before I get away here, I want to talk about this here. This is a hole punch. What this is good for is if you're doing an eyelet and we have an eyelet stitch up here, or you're doing a keyhole buttonhole, this is what you would use to punch out that round part. And make sure that you're doing it on a block of wood or something to protect your surface. This hole here is so that what accumulates in that tube as you're punching out several things has sort of a clean out, has somewhere to go. That's what that's for. And this is not terribly sharp, but I would still recommend not, you know, punching it down on anything because it's meant to actually cut fabric. All right. And we talked about sp spool caps a little bit. There's different sizes of spool caps. Uh, for your smaller diameter spools, you see the one that's up here? That one is for your smaller diameter spools. If you have a larger spool, you want to use your larger spool cap like this. And then of course, medium sized spools would be for that. Now what about this little guy here? Well, this one is for the kind of spools that don't have an end cap to them. So you'd put that right in there. Remember the purpose of these spool caps is to keep your spool from sliding off the spool pin. So put that guy back there. And then this here is a net to put around the more springy type of threads that are decorative and you don't want them to kind of unspool and get all tangled up. This kind of keeps things corralled and orderly. And this here is an extra cover for your bobbin that does not have marks on it. Um, it's kind of handy to have a separate one, an extra one. Now this one, this foot here is the quilt piecing foot. It has this little flange on the side and it gives you a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. So if you're piecing like this, and you want this seam allowance to be just perfectly parallel all the way down, this is the foot that you would use for piecing. Then we have a variety of, of tools here for free motion quilting. This one is for straight stitch free motion quilting. 
Um, a similar one to it, you can use this for zigzag if you want, but also this one is good for echo quilting. You can use the lines that are right in there to echo quilt around, say, the edge of a uh, applique or additional lines of stitching. You can use that one for that. Now, the way these go on, you would need to take your presser foot off, take your ankle or the presser foot holder off, make sure that you're doing your, the lockout key when you're doing that, like there. It, um, it's just a safety feature to have that. And then you would put this on, make sure it's tightened up, make sure it's nice and tight and that your needle is in the correct position. Like right now it's on the side position, you'd want it in the center. Just roll your hand wheel down to make sure it's in the correct position for that. And then we have the open toe quilting foot. Now what this is good for, um, these kind of float and you would change that in settings to make them float. This one works more like uh, some of you are familiar with it. You put this over the needle clamp bar and every time the needle goes up, this goes up. Every time the needle comes down, this comes down. So for different kinds of uh, quilting that you can do, maybe different kinds of fabric that you're using, um, depending on which, which one you want to use. My personal favorite is this one here. It just seems, I like the fact that it can float, the fact that in settings you can raise it or lower, depending on the thickness of your batting. Now, let's speaking of batting, if you have something that you're quilting, say you're not doing free motion, but you're doing say a serpentine across your quilt, but you don't want those layers to be pushed ahead like that, this is what you want. This is called a walking foot and the walk or dual feed, even feed foot. There's different names for it, but it's basically the same idea. This part fits right around your needle clamp screw or needle clamp bar there. And as the uh, needle goes up, this goes down. The feed dogs, as they push the fabric forward, see how these little feed dogs are pushing down. And what that does is it eliminates the drag of this foot so that the fabric can be fed along evenly. Okay, and then we have this quilting bar. Now what this is good for is again, let's say you're doing lines of stitching across your quilt and you want them nice and parallel. This is excellent for doing that. This can also fit in the back of your foot holder. Let's see, I'm going to lift this up so I get this in there. It's a tight fit, but it should be because you don't want it moving back and forth. This is for where if you want to have, say, uh, even parallel lines on your, if I wanted them wider and that little foot wasn't wide enough, I could use this to make parallel lines on my uh, just regular fabric. So nice tight fit there. So that's our basic accessories, as you can see, there's a lot you can do with this machine. It's very versatile. I invite you to try these things out, experiment with them, have fun, be creative. If this video has been helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. If you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and on other machines, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.